Welcome to the 10 minute tutorial for research. My name is Chris. I'm a senior solutions architect for AWS, focusing on higher education. Today, we're going to be talking about our clone on our virtual server in AWS, leveraging the R clone web interface to simplify the migration of data to S3. In today's video, we're going to cover a brief overview of R clone and what it is, some features that make R clone an attractive option for researchers and for any customer for that matter, migrating data to the cloud. And finally, we will walk through a demonstration of R clone web interface running on a virtual server in AWS. Our clone at its basic level is a command line program or CLI that can be used to manage files for both local and cloud storage. It's a popular option with customers because it is a free open source project with a large active community of contributors and followers. It is supported on most popular operating systems, including Linux, Windows, and Mac. In addition to being able to use our clone commands in a terminal or command prompt, it also supports an optional web interface. Our clone supports over 40 cloud storage providers. And to learn more about this and other features, you can visit rclone.org. Our clone is a mature product that offers several features, including the ability to backup and restore data to and from the cloud. As we saw previously, our clone supports over 40 cloud storage providers and allows you to simplify the process of migrating your data to and from other cloud service providers or locally. If installed locally, it gives you the added benefit to mount as a local mount cloud storage as a local disk. It also import, supports encryption, caching, compression, as well as a multitude of other features. Let's take a look at how you can deploy the R clone GUI on a virtual web server running in AWS and interact with your data through the web interface. As you can see here, I already have an EC2 instance running with R clone installed on it. You'll notice that I have a public IP that we're going to use to SSH into the EC2 instance to run the command to launch the web GUI. And then we will also use this public IP to connect to the web GUI in our browser. In addition, you can also see that I've already set up permissions for this EC2 instance to talk to S3 in order to read and write data using an IAM role. So let's connect to our EC2 instance via SSH. And we will run a command to launch the R clone web GUI. As you can see from the command, we can specify a port that we're going to connect on as well as a username and password. After running the command, we'll get some notifications that the web GUI is currently running. So now we can jump back over to our browser using the public IP address and the port that we specified. I will go ahead and type in the username and password set up to connect into this instance. And we're, we're prompted to a dashboard where we'll get some additional information about our R clone web interface. Um, once we start transferring data, we'll get some information on bytes transferred, average network speed, and we'll get a nice graph here that's gonna show us the speed and average speed over time. So the first thing we wanna do is come over to our configs and we're going to create a new config specifically for our S3 uh, bucket. As you can see, I've already got a few here, but we'll start with creating a new one. Uh, we'll need to use a unique name. So for example, if we want to set this up specifically to point to Glacier, uh, we can name that appropriately. We can select Amazon S3 as our cloud storage provider. We'll also provide some additional attributes to um, dictate how we're going to connect. Uh, the storage provider is going to be AWS directly. Again, since we use the IAM role attached to the instance, we're going to set this to true to pull that those credentials directly from the instance. Um, no need to use an access key or a secret key since we're pulling those credentials directly from the instance. Uh, we can also set a specific region to connect to. So in this case, we're going to be using US East 1. 
We can also set permissions on the files once they are transferred. So in order to make sure that our bucket owner retains full control, we can use that canned ACL. And then we can specify a specific storage location, in this case, Glacier, to push the files directly to S3 Glacier. And once we've done that, uh, we'll see the config show up here. Um, among all of our configs, we can now use Explorer to transfer data between the cloud storage providers. So we can start with connecting to our Dropbox location. Uh, this config I've already supplied. But you can see I've connected into my Dropbox account and I get a list of files. Uh, now we can choose the specific S3 location that we'd like. If we want to push to S3 Standard, Glacier, or Deep Archive, we can also connect directly into a specific bucket. Uh, you can see here that I have no files. If we go over to back to our AWS console, I'm already logged in to this same bucket and we see it reflecting the same thing, no files. Now, if we wanted to start with transferring a file from Dropbox directly over to S3, we can uh, just drag and drop. You have the option to drag and drop individual files, move entire folders or select multiple files. So a lot of flexibility. Uh, once the transfer is completed, we will sh see it show up here. If we go back, to our S3 bucket, refresh, we'll see that the file has in fact been moved to our S3 bucket, and we can see that it's in the specific storage class that we specified earlier. Uh, back in the R clone web interface, um, now that we've transferred some data, um, we get uh, some statistics that are populated in our jobs and our speed um, location. So we can keep track of how many bytes we've moved, how much data we've transferred, any current jobs that are running, and what those speeds are. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for your time.